Huge mineral dog. Hi guys. Well, I guess this is as close as we're going to get to a hot summer day in upstate New York. The heat wave has finally hit us here on this Friday afternoon. It is July 28th, 2023. We are at, we have hit a sizzling 87 degrees there at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I hope I don't pass out of heat stroke here on Friday, July 28th. But starting tomorrow, and as far as they can see into the future, right on through the first week of August, I guess we're never supposed to get out of the 70s. We should not see 80 degrees for as far as they can see into the future after today. I guess the high is 73 on Sunday. So maybe this withering heat uh, will be out of here tomorrow. So as long as... Uh, I'm out enjoying my one-day summer of 2023. Uh, do what I do every Friday, and we're going to head over to mongabay.com for our weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant, where we simply check in with our old uh, apocalyptimist doomer buddy, Rhett Butler, and the boys and girls at mongabay.com to see what is on their minds while the rest of the world, I guess, is, I don't know, what is the rest of the world doing this week looking for a, uh, an irrigation canal to cool off in. Anyway, we're going to start off here as we frequently do in Indonesia. This is on some place I've never heard of in the middle of nowhere. On Indonesia's Serum Island, a massive oil find lies beneath sacred land. In the east of Indonesia's Serum Island, an Australian energy firm has announced encouraging results from a survey of hydrocarbon deposits, describing the find as holding, quote, world-class potential. All right. But members of Serum's Bati indigenous community told Maling Mangabe the drilling had disturbed sites they have considered sacred for generations. A representative for BT Barnum Energy said, you know, a sucker is born every day. Didn't PT Barnum, wasn't he a sucker, an indigenous sucker is born every minute fame? Said the company had held talks with customary representatives. Hmm. All right. This is... Okay, we have an interview. Uh, they're still doing interviews at Manga Bay, so we have an interview with... Uh, this is Monica Medina the new president and CEO of the Wildlife Conservation Society says this to tell Mangabe, we must never assume that a healthy planet is automatic. Well, at, actually, uh, Monica, I've got some bad news. A healthy planet before humans got here was, was pretty automatic. It was, you know, some little, some little uh, bumps and grinds uh, along the way, but all in all, it was a pretty healthy planet for what was it, 65 million years, or was it 265 million years? I can't forget till something made the planet uh, automatically unhealthy. Quote, we must never assume that a healthy planet is automatic. We can never take it for granted. The earth is our garden, and we must always tend it. Yes, 
that is the responsibility of every generation and everyone everywhere. We will not have a healthy planet until we work together, young and old, around the world to keep our peckers in our pants and to not let our knickers down. All right, thank you, Monica, for the breath of fresh air. Okay, we're going to learn in this next column what we need to protect and why. Yes, a 20-year Amazon research, research hints that fate of the tropics. <clears throat> okay. Many informed people understand. Many. Well, I guess 10 or 12 people is, is many. Many informed people understand that climate change is reducing tropical biodiversity and thereby degrading the functionality and ecoservices of tropical forests. Hmm, but what are the specific mechanisms in which these forests are being diminished? Well, specific mechanisms, bulldozers? Is that, is a bulldozer a specific mechanism? Is a chainsaw a specific mechanism? Is pouring a gallon of gas on the Amazon rainforest and lighting a match? Is that a specific mechanism? Yes. All right, they're looking at um, some uh, some research, some twenty-year research coming out of the Peruvian Amazon, uh, not too far uh, from where I was down there in 2009. I guess they were down there when I was. Anyway, looking at specific mechanisms of death and war and famine and pestilence. All right, we have for the third week in a row this running series on this Cambodian National Park being uh, just destroyed. Uh, just there for anyone to see. Um, anyway, we've already heard it twice. Okay. We don't hear much from Bosnia on uh, this uh, in this uh, roundup. So, uh, you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. So, this week's YouTube video, if you want to go over there and watch it, is. Uh, Saving Europe's Rivers. Good luck on that. Saving Europe's Rivers. And they're particularly looking at scientists protect biodiversity against hydropower in Bosnia. Okay. Listen to this. Scientists protect biodiversity against hydropower. In Bosnia and anywhere else, you know, is there anybody left on this planet thinking that hydropower is going to save the planet from fossil fuels? Uh, my guess is, in many ways, that hydropower, and uh, depending on how you want to, you know, draw your lines is more damaging to the planet than the amount of energy that would be produced by burning coal. Uh, what I have seen, at least in Costa Rica, these absolutely gorgeous world-class waterfalls and these beautiful uh, biodiverse rainforest canyons being, uh, you know, just flooded out 
into silt-laden dead pools. So uh, Costa Rica can go around acting like uh, they're, they're saving the damn planet. Give me a break. There is nothing clean. There is nothing green. Sure as hell is not anything sustainable about hydropower. And I don't give a damn whether you're in Costa Rica or Bosnia. Hydropower, one of the bright green lies of the 21st century. Okay, moving on from Bosnia. Instead of death and war and famine and pestilence, we have mud, muck, and death. All right. Well, we 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 had uh, we had a we, we met at death. So death, mud, muck, war, famine, and pestilence. So we have two new horsemen of the apocalypse: mud and muck. These twin brothers, mud and muck. Yes. Cambodia's plan to obstruct trawlers. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, well, <laughs> I actually, uh, I, I actually like this hopium, you, you, you know, uh, so I guess what they're doing in, uh, off the coast of Cambodia, you know, where, where these goddamn trawlers come dragging their nets, is they're building on the bottom of the ocean, these big jagged uh, concrete structures. So when these planet eaters come along scraping the bottom of the ocean, they will scrape their nets right off the bottom of the boat and then they can go collect the nets. And they also double as, uh, as artificial reefs to help rebuild the reef that was there originally. So I don't believe it. it history has happened. Uh, we have found some, <laughs> some hopium that I can get behind. <coughs> I think we should build underwater concrete artificial reefs uh, anywhere where there are these bottom uh, trawlers. Good for you, Cambodia. All right, more myth of the noble savage, which I do not want to uh, promote. Okay. I see over there in Malaysia, the Rhino and Forest Fund is trying to return palm oil plantations back to nature. Uh, good luck. Uh, all right. What is going on with the human modified landscapes and the Brazilian highway network take a wild guess. Uh, okay. Would you believe, you know, once again, every week I say it, why I depend on Rhett Butler to tell me how the world works. Would you believe that the Philippines' largest freshwater wetland and Noble savage livelihoods face multiple threats. Uh, I do not believe that a Filipino wetland and the noble savages who live there are facing multiple threats. Yes, development projects. Uh, locals and others moving into the fertile region, burning and draining the peatlands and swamp forest for conversion into farmland. 
Yes. The continued expansion of agricultural areas into the Agusan Marsh, known as the Philippines until now least disturbed freshwater wetland, has changed habitats in the basin and fragmented ecosystems. Do you think so? I think uh, sometimes a headline just speaks for itself. Critics decry Nepal minister's terrible idea of sport hunting tigers. Nepal's environment minister has suggested selling licenses to hunt tigers in the country as a means of both controlling the predator's population. Well, you can't argue with that. Uh, one, one good way to control a predator's population is to put a bullet in them. That's anywhere. Uh, to raise money for conservation. You know. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill more tigers to raise money to conserve more land for more tigers to kill. Hmm. But conservationists, wildlife experts, yes, wildlife experts and local communities have denounced it as a, quote, terrible idea, said it would endanger the tigers and the wider ecosystem. Hmm. Uh. Man, they must have just opened up a Cambodian uh, Manga Bay Bureau. <clears throat> Cambodia awards swath of national <coughs> park forest to Tycoon's son, a Cambodian, a, a Cambodian tycoon notorious for his association with illegal logging, has expanded his grip over the country's largest national park with a swath of forest awarded to his son's rubber company. And there you go. This gives Lee Yong Fat, a ruling party senator, and his family members effective control of tens of thousands of hectares of forest land inside Botum Sakura National Park. Yes, the carving up of the park awarded to politically connected tycoons has led to widespread deforestation that has driven both people and wildlife out of Bautum Sakor. Yes. Well, at least it's, uh, at least it's driving people out, so that's worth something. Uh, okay. Does anybody here believe uh, for one minute that deep sea mining rules have been delayed for two more years. Hmm. Although this timeline is not legally binding. While companies can now, you know, according to the original agreement, technically apply for licenses to mine the deep sea. Experts say, I like this, experts say, the new agreement may make it more difficult for the applications to be approved. Uh -huh. Next to that one, Scores of parliamentarians renew opposition to deep sea mining at international meeting. Uh, huh. 
Would you believe that Bangladesh orchid losses signal ecological imbalance? Bangladesh has lost 32 of its orchid species from nature in the last 100 years out of 188 once available orchid species. Habitat destruction, overharvesting, and indiscriminate collection for sale in local and international markets cause the disappearance of orchids and everything, uh, everything else. Uh, okay, moving on. Here's a story on destructive hydropower dams in the Balkans. Over 3,000 hydropower dams are proposed to be built in the next few years on Balkan rivers. Uh, would you believe that uh, conservationists are making the wild, crazy argument that permits granted to hydropower corporations do not take biological richness adequately into account. Yes. All right. Vietnam rice farmers are looking at a low water future. I bet so. You will not believe that most Indonesian palm oil firms are not sharing land with small farmers as required. Hmm, only 21% of Indonesian oil palm plantation companies have fulfilled their legal obligations to allocate land for smallholder farmers. Hmm. A lot going on in uh, Indonesia. Here is nuclear pioneers press ahead with plans for Indonesia Island. Uh, we got nuclear in Indonesia here. Then we go from Indonesia to Brazil offshore oil plans in Brazil threaten South America's largest coral reef. Hmm. There you go. Let's see. Uh, besides the coral reef, oil offshore drilling in the region also poses a threat to the longest continuous stretch of mangrove left in the world. We kiss that goodbye when we have our first big oil spill. Uh, looks like seaweed farmers are having it tough due to climate change. I thought seaweed was supposed to feed 8 billion people. I guess they're running into some problem. Uh, all right, the official results are in. Study confirms a surge in deforestation in indigenous lands under Bozo Nero. A study found a 129% increase in deforestation within indigenous lands in the Brazilian Amazon between 2013 and 2021, as a result, an estimated 96 million metric tons of carbon was released into the atmosphere during that period. Researchers attribute the trend to illegal extractive activities, cattle ranching, 
and land grabbing by invaders and and some some noble savages D -d -d. all right anyway guys We have a new airport proposal for a Malaysian island does not fly with conservationists. Yep. A proposal to build a new international airport would destroy coral reefs in the heart of one of the country's most biodiverse marine parks and have wide-ranging impacts on local communities and biodiversity. Oh boy. Yes. Okay, one more earth shattering headline to close up this week's uh, ecological meltdown round our brand says I am talking to myself I do not believe this but it's right here in Manga Bay so it has to be true roads roads are primary vectors of deforestation in the Amazon hmm roads are primary vectors of deforestation in the Amazon? Hmm. I don't know. I will, uh, I'll have to think about that one. Uh, you, you know, some of these things, you know, you really have to, uh, to dig deep to figure out how could roads be vectors of deforestation in the Amazon rainforest. I'm going to have to sleep on that one try to figure out that mystery but right now I need to wrap up uh, my ecological meltdown roundup rant because I have to go take the flat tire off of my gator tractor take it to the Amish guy to change my tire so I can run my Airbnb guest up the hill to their tiny house, I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your tiny house vacation rental while you still can. My guys. All right, I have a brand new battery and it's not even flashing. <laughs>